Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we are taking a look at a fearsome Jurassic predator, the Allosaurus. Allosaurus was the most common large theropod in the vast tract of western American fossil bearing rock known as the Morrison Formation, accounting for 70-75% to of theropod specimens, and as such was the top predator of the time. The Allosaurus lived 155 to 150 million years ago during the late Jurassic period and as well as North America fossils have been found in Portugal and possibly Tanzania also. Fossils of Allosaurus were first found during the infamous Bone Wars, a period of time when Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope were competing with each other in a fierce rivalry to discover and name more new species than the other. Because of their rush to name new species, often their discoveries were hastily described and many discoveries were not followed up on. Due to this, like so many prehistoric creatures discovered during this time, Allosaurus has a complicated naming history. The first described fossil in this history was a bone obtained secondhand by Ferdinand Hayden in 1869. The locals had identified such bones as petrified horse hooves. Hayden sent his specimen to Joseph Leedy, who identified it as half of a tail vertebra. Originally assigning it to a European dinosaur genus, he later decided it deserved its own genus, Antrodemus. It was O.C. Marsh who first named the Allosaurus based on a small collection of fragmentary bones, including parts of three vertebrae, a rib fragment, a tooth, a toe bone and the shaft of the right humerus. Marsh and Cope went on to coin several other genera based on similarly sparse material that would later be reassigned as Allosaurus remains. In 1920, Charles W. Gilmore came to the conclusion that the tail vertebra named Antrodemus by Leedy was indistinguishable from those of Allosaurus, and Antrodemus thus should be the preferred name because as the older name it had priority. So for the next 50 years, Allosaurus was known as Antrodemus until the mid-1970s when James Madsen concluded that the name Allosaurus should be used because Antrodemus was based on material with poor, if any, diagnostic features and locality information. For example, the geological formation that the single bone of Antrodemus came from is unknown. Allosaurus has a typical theropod body plan, bipedal stance, powerful legs and long counterbalancing tail. This body plan was so successful that many species of theropod dinosaur developed it. Another reason why it's been so difficult to identify species as Allosaurus or another closely related but separate species. Allosaurus fragilis, the best known species, had an average length of 8.5 metres, that's about 28 foot, with the largest definitive Allosaurus specimens estimated at 9.7 metres, that's 32 feet long, and an estimated weight of 2.3 metric tonnes. The most distinctive feature of Allosaurus are the small horns above its eyes, which are special growths of the lacrimal bone of the skull. Theories as to their purpose include potential weapons, although they were probably too fragile for this purpose, or sunshades to prevent glare in the eyes, to the more widely accepted species recognition of its own kind, and possibly display for attracting a mate. Studies of the brain of the Allosaurus have been done using CT scans. These scans reveal that the brain is very similar to those of crocodiles. The Allosaurus had a large olfactory bulb, which indicates a very good sense of smell. However, the area of the brain responsible for interpreting the signals from the olfactory bulb was underdeveloped. This could mean that the Allosaurus was only able to detect a limited range of smells, but it could detect those smells very well. Unlike later theropod carnivores such as Tyrannosaurus, the Allosaurus had larger and more powerful arms that probably played a role in its feeding strategy. While it's not in doubt about its carnivorous diet, there has been some debate over its feeding methods. Some have suggested that the Allosaurus was a scavenger. While all modern apex predators will scavenge when the opportunity presents itself, there is evidence of active hunting in the Allosaurus remains. There have been injuries reported in the arms and feet that are not consistent with a single traumatic event, but are stress fractures likely to have occurred over an extended period. These injuries have been interpreted as occurring while interacting with struggling prey. More direct evidence for what the Allosaurus preyed upon has also been found. Paleontologists have found an Allosaurus tail vertebra with a puncture wound that matches the shape of a Stegosaurus tail spike and a Stegosaurus neck bone bearing a U-shaped bite mark that corresponds to the shape of the Allosaurus jaws. 
also found was an allosaur pelvis bone stab wound that was in the conical shape of a stegosaur tail spike also. The bone showed no evidence of healing, suggesting the stab wound was fatal to the carnivore. Surprisingly, the Allosaurus had an unusually weak bite. It's been estimated that the bite force of this huge predator was less than modern leopards. The bite force of the Allosaurus has been calculated as between 805 and 2148 newtons. Compare this to alligators at 13,000 newtons, lions at 4,167 newtons, and leopards at 2,268 newtons. But it was also calculated that the skull of Allosaurus could withstand up to 55,500 newtons of downward force. This has led to speculations that it would attack open-mouthed with a downward hatchet-like motion and slash at its prey with its teeth. The Allosaurus could open its mouth extremely wide. In this way, it could use its jaws as a kind of rasp to strip off thin strips of surface flesh from its prey. Several bites like this would have had the effect of subjugating its prey to tremendous blood loss, possibly to the extent of causing it to collapse. Other feeding strategies have been proposed. For example, it's been suggested that Allosaurs were flesh grazers, which could take bites of flesh out of living sauropods that were sufficient to sustain the predator, so it would not have needed to expend the effort to kill the prey outright. This strategy would also potentially have allowed the prey to recover and be fed upon in a similar way later. Another way that the Allosaurus may have tackled large sauropod prey would be pack hunting. However, there is no direct evidence for this, and some evidence that indicate this was unlikely. It's known that allosaur allosaur interactions were quite aggressive. There is fossil evidence of wounds on an allosaur skull being caused by other allosaurs. But at several fossil sites, there have been found remains of many individuals occurring at the same time, and this is what led some to suggest the pack hunting theory. But pack hunting to bring down large prey is actually fairly rare among vertebrates in general and modern diapsid carnivores, including lizards, crocodiles and birds, rarely cooperate to hunt in such a way. Instead, they're typically territorial and will kill and cannibalise intruders of the same species, and will also do the same to smaller individuals that they attempt to eat before they do when aggravated at feeding sites. According to this interpretation, the accumulation of remains of multiple allosaurs individuals at the same site are not due to pack hunting, but to the fact that the Allosaurus individuals were drawn together to feed on other disabled or dead Allosaurs, and were sometimes killed in the process. This could explain the high proportion of juvenile and subadult Allosaurs present. As juveniles and subadults are disproportionately killed at modern group feeding sites of animals like crocodiles and Komodo dragons, there is some evidence for cannibalism in Allosaurus, including Allosaurus shed teeth found among rib fragments, possible tooth marks on a shoulder blade, and cannibalised Allosaurus skeletons. Another possibility is a type of behaviour often seen in some modern birds called mobbing behaviour. This is where, rather than working to a coherent plan, several individuals relentlessly attack a creature that has become separated from the group and wear it down by attrition. When the animal can take no more, it collapses and the predators move in onto it. The fossil representation of Allosaurus is extremely good, and there are probably more fossils of Allosaurus than any other theropod dinosaur, and as such there is a wealth of information about this fascinating dinosaur. There is much more I haven't covered here, but for today's talk, unfortunately, we've run out of time. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please leave a like and a comment down below, and please subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you next time, here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.